All right, match two here, playing against Zerdna. Uh, this hand looks pretty good. Bone Splitter, Preordain, lands to cast everything, and Augur Bloss, which is amazing. So we keep. Play a tap land turn one. And our opponents, uh, they led on a forest, so I had to assume they were on Stompy, and I thought they'd have like multiple Burning Tree Emissaries, but they just had Nest Invader, and the fact that they're playing Nest Invader makes me a little suspicious that they have, you know, multiple Elephant Guides in their hand. Or uh, maybe just a lot of two drops, but this is kind of a rare hand from Stompy. I also added a few more snaps to the main deck, and I think it's going to be pretty effective against Stompy because they do like to stack up their creatures with Elephant Guide these days. They don't play like Young Wolf or anything anymore, they just play Elephant Guide. And uh, Elephant Guide is a pretty powerful card, so... Yeah, having a free bounce effect seems pretty good against it. So, anyway, sorry. So we play our Augur, get a Brainstorm, bin two Augurs, which is unfortunate. Augur is probably our best card in the matchup. We decide not to chump block there because obviously we want uh, as many permanents as we can get for flickering. I pick up the mountain because I don't think the one life is going to matter and we want to uh, cast all our stuff. And I play Bone Splitter because I hope maybe if I get like a Lightning Bolt or a Galvanic Blast or something, I can trade. But <laughs> while we were tapped out, uh, not leaving up Dispel, we uh, kind of got dunked on with this Guardian Pit Skulk. Uh, I, I really had no idea that they would have that, because they didn't play anything turn one, so I don't know, maybe they were leaving it in their hand, but... They also played Nettle Sentinel out, so maybe they, uh, they definitely drew the Nettle Sentinel, and maybe the Scargan Pit Skull. So, pretty good. We have a Seagate Oracle, we get Radiant Fountain. We could have taken, I think, another preordain or a brainstorm off of it and maybe that was the correct call because gaining two life isn't really going to matter that much but what is going to matter is these two guys right here beating us down and if we can find a way to get rid of them then we're in pretty good shape obviously our opponent's holding up because why else would they attack with this guy because uh, I could have killed it, and also I would have been at one, so I was like, okay, well I'll chump block the nest invader and leave my auger alive because my best chance of winning this game is to be able to flicker the auger or do something to help me find more galvanic blasts or an echoing truth. I think I have one main deck echoing truth, so I brainstorm. I get a galv blast. I preordained two lands to the bottom. I gal blast their one of their smaller things because I have to stay alive. And Radiant Fountain helped keep me alive a little bit because now I get to go to one after I chump block. Uh, but they have the vines and that's it. So moving on to game two. I don't know. I don't know what I could have done that game. I probably should have had the read on some kind of pump effects, so maybe I should have left up Dispel, given that they had a creature they could sacrifice to turn on Hunger of the Howl Pack. I, I uh, wasn't thinking about that, honestly. 
But that would have bought me a lot of time. So this game I have Echoing Truth, which is obviously really good. And Galvanic Blast, which is also great. Uh, we don't actually have any mana that we can play turn one with the red. But we could play Boilerworks, so we could hopefully blast this. As long as they don't make it huge or something. So this is kind of an awkward spot because I want to kill the Nettle Sentinel at sorcery speed so that they can't stack up anything on it. But I also want to Echoing Truth the Scargan Pit Skull. Maybe I should have done this on my opponent's turn, but I think I do it at sorcery speed here to play around tricks. And I don't want to be taking six. I feel like that's a bad idea. I don't know, maybe it's all I can do though. But if I take six, and then end of turn Echoing Truth these, and then blast this, I don't know. I don't know, but I did it at sorcery speed here. I think it's probably better to do it like this. But, I don't know. So they play their ledge walker, which is... Obviously a great target for elephant guides and stuff. And uh, Hunger of the Howl Pack. So we get our other red mana online. So they attack us to get their pit skulks online, obviously. We're able to kill one. And we probably should have done it at the end of our turn. Uh, just in case we draw exactly Archaeomancer, because uh, then we'll be able to Archaeomancer and blast the other one. But, uh, you know, that's kind of a corner case. We probably won't draw... Oh, wait, we did draw Archaeomancer. Oops. And also, I could have Archaeomancer got back Blast to hide the other Blast in my hand. But I just didn't sequence it right. So. So yeah, they get in an extra two damage. Uh, because I didn't blast at the end of my end step. We draw snap, which is amazing. It nets two mana. So we could like snap our own Archaeomancer if we have to. So I Gal Blast it in uh, sorcery speed, and I probably should have held it up again in case they try to go for, like, Elephant Guide or something, or Ranker, but I couldn't really play around Ranker. Um, so I'm thinking about snapping my own Archaeomancer here, I think, just to get back Echoing Truth. Uh, I think... Having Echoing Truth will help against this Elephant Guide thing, but my plan is to wait until I can find Electricity because I boarded in. I think I should have like two or three Electricity in my deck. So I think it's two, actually, exactly two. But I'm not going to snap my own guy because that's negative mana. So I block this guy and I just flicker it to save 2 damage. And they don't have vines up or anything, so... So I'm going to play Augur Bloss, and then maybe I could get some value off my flicker. Uh, I'm only at 8 life, which is a big deal, because... Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to lose in 2 turns if I can't do anything about this ledge walker. Um, but I have Dispel, so I have pretty good protection against Vines of the Basswood if they try and... Uh, do it in response to my flickering. So I take six. And then at the end of their turn, I decide to flicker my guys. And if I draw, like, a lightning bolt or something, 
off this auger. I might want to lightning bolt the nest invader, but really what I want is electricity because then I can use the flicker to get back echoing truth. Echoing truth to elephant guide and then just like electricity away the board. That's a bad miss. Now I can like double block their nest invader or something. So I snap their nest invader, which is I think that's an alright play because now I can flicker again. Hopefully draw electricity. While still leaving up dispel. So here I think I wanna take ghostly flicker. But I'm not sure. Dispel, I don't think I'm going to need two dispels, so Flicker can kind of turn into anything as long as it's in our graveyard. So we draw a Relic, which is not useful at all. Although we could use it to draw one card. So we go for our Flicker plan again. Um we have kind of slim out we also miss on auger again so we get back echoing truth because i think my plan was to play relic crack it to draw a card and hope to draw our second snap and then we'll have enough mana to like snap back our auger but looking at it again i don't i don't actually think that works so a good plan might be to like flicker our auger boss in the land because we have one mana floating we can tap is it boiler works flicker them hope to draw a snap in the first three cards snap our auger boss untap two is it boiler works but i think that actually doesn't work either we would need to have like a preordain in hand to try and find electricity with our extra mana. So I'm trying to figure out if I have a way out, uh, but I don't think so. So look what we draw. Electricity. That's what we wanted the whole time. If it had been one card higher, we would have won. Or we would have at least had a fighting chance, but... Now I just flicker these. I don't know what I'm thinking, but... Yeah, kind of a heartbreaker to lose to, to Stompy. But as I said, I put more snaps in the deck. I think the amount of removal is the same uh, when it comes to like Electric Re and Galvanic Blast and stuff. I also put in a couple more artifact lands just to turn on our Galv Blasts. Um... So yeah, we're, we're probably better set up for this matchup than we used to be. But I'm going to play this in a league again, and hopefully it'll, it'll work out. Anyway, thanks for watching. That was round two. On to round three.